Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new Maximum Inc. Music Magazine video podcast. I'm your host, Terry Barr, and I am so happy to have joining me from Nashville today. It is Mark Elliott, and Mark is kind of a do-it-all. Okay, Mark, you're a singer, <laughs> songwriter, you're an author, you're a producer. Did I miss anything? Oh, well, uh probably a handful of things that I do on the side of those. But first of all, uh, thanks for having me. It's great to, great to finally be with you. I've heard so much about you and your, uh, and your show, and I'm uh, excited to be on it here from Nashville. You are so kind, and you are our actually first farther away guest. Almost oh, everyone right. else has at least been in Wisconsin or the Midwest, so this is really exciting. But oh, I great. Think what I need to let people know about you is you do have – Wisconsin connections. So tell me a little I bit. I do. About that. I do. Well, um, of course, Gabe Radulis, uh, a very dear friend uh, of mine and yours. Yes, we love uh, great, Gabe Radulis. Great artist, a guitar player, singer, songwriter, the whole nine yards. And actually, another Wisconsin, I think Madison area artist connected Gabe and I years ago. And that was uh, Brianna at the time, Hardiman. Oh, yeah. She called me, and this has been, oh, I don't know, uh, seven years ago. I know Gabe was still in high school, <laughs> and, I still had, and I still had hair. Oh, you're uh -huh. funny. <laughs> <laughs> but she called uh, and said, hey, there's this uh, kid uh, in uh, Madison who's the real deal, and can I give him your number because I'm trying to push him to come to Nashville. And so I've known Gabe for for years and as you already know he's an old soul so uh mm. and i'm really immature so it's a good combination oh my gosh oh my gosh well <laughs> so I we, 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 be, we we become best friends and oh. um i produced a record on him an ep called late night drive about uh maybe three years ago okay and so he's returning the favor and uh started in early covid times um working on these solo singles and uh, these are most of these singles are, are songs that Gabe and I have written uh, and that he's produced and, and uh, played on. And uh, so it's been a really uh, it's been a good labor of love, as they say. Uh, well, now my fingers are crossed that we get you and Gabe up here in Wisconsin to play together uh, sometime. That would be incredible. I, I have been on him to give me the, the <laughs> tour of Madison. I have been to Madison, of course, over the years, many times and love it and love the music scene there but uh i have a feeling that uh gabe uh, gabe's understanding of the music scene there is uh is um pretty significant so i can't wait to go back home uh, to his old home and check things out so oh, i love it hopefully we'll do that yes i'll i'll bother him for you as well Good. <laughs> do that so mark how have you been i know we're months past 2020 thank goodness but it sounds like you really did keep yourself busy with writing both songs and your book and now you've got an e-newsletter so did that help you get through it all and is that really good to see all of that come to fruition now well it is i mean all of those things i will uh have been toying with uh especially the ancillary stuff like writing books and having a literary newsletter yeah. Uh, but certainly the forced downtime um, caused a lot of thinking and reprioritizing. I have a band called Runaway Home that you may or may not be familiar, mm -hmm. familiar with. We've been together uh, a dozen years or so, and uh, we lost probably 150 gigs uh, oh. out through the COVID. So it was fairly devastating. Uh, and I'm, I'm not telling you a story you haven't heard from almost any musician. Yeah. So that side was very devastating because, as you know, the music business, I moved to Nashville 31 years ago uh, to write for uh, publishers in town and other artists and the mechanisms by which you made money off a song. Cause this town is built on a song. Yeah. And the mechanisms by which you made money pre digital world uh, are so different now. Yeah. And so because the income has been uh, so significantly uh, damaged by this digital uh, world, um, we all went back, especially all those older songwriters went back to doing what we were doing at 18 and at Gabe's age, which is hitting the road. So when COVID happened Ugh. and it took, and took the road away, I mean, 
you you know this is that you don't go in this business to get rich, but at some point, at some point, you kind of go, hey, like this business isn't hard enough, guys. Right. But you're right. The good side of COVID, and I think for a lot of artists, it was forced downtime, so it was time to think about what mattered to you. Uh, nobody was kind of behind the eight ball. We were all in the same sinking ship, yeah. so you could try new stuff, right, without being afraid of like falling behind on bookings or being on the road or um, kind of falling behind your contemporaries, you could try stuff. And so it really opened up time for me to get serious about being an author, um, both in terms of writing books and uh, um, having this new literary newsletter. And I've been producing uh, records here. Um, I live about 20 miles as a crow flies west of Nashville, tucked back in a little hollow called Cub, Cub Creek. And I've had it. a studio here for 20 <laughs> years. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been good. You know, I mean, um, I was anxious to find all kinds of different creative ways to starve to death. I felt like I, I had uh, learned the starvation of songwriting and I was eager to explore how to starve to death as an author, which quite frankly is easier. Oh my so. gosh. Wow. Okay. There <laughs> so, it is. There it is. Yeah. So for anybody um, listening, <clears throat> watching this, they're going to want to get to know you more. How can they find you online? How can they follow yeah. you? How can they support you? Well, um, I am on all the socials. I would say I'm most active on Instagram at I'm a creative soul. And instead of an A, it's an eight. So an I'm a create soul. Yep. That wasn't Clever. me being creative. It was just the other one was taken. Oh. So I'm there on Instagram <laughs> at I'm a creative soul. I'm at, uh, Mark Elliott and Mark Elliott Creative on Facebook. Those are probably the two social media platforms that I'm on the most Excellent. daily. And then I have a main website called Mark Elliott Creative, which houses all of my truth and lies. So people can find me there. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like so. a new song coming out. Yeah, oh, and speaking right. of which, you do have a new song coming out in uh, yes. the next couple of days. Tell us about it. Well, it's exciting. And uh, this is the... Uh, I believe the fifth single since oh. the beginning of uh, COVID. Yeah. One of my um, philosophies of releasing singles these days is to milk them for as long as I can by releasing videos and fan videos and uh, behind the scenes and just keep a, a, a single in front of people for as long as I can because my, my goal has been to kind of reintroduce myself. Nice. Uh, with solo music so the old style of releasing a couple of singles and then an album doesn't seem to exist anymore yeah. so we have spread uh gabe and i have spread this process out so this friday a new single called hear your voice comes out and it's all about um hearing somebody's voice on the telephone but really wanting to hear them in person Oh, I love it. Oh. And we wrote that square in the middle of COVID era. So <laughs> I bet. I think everyone is going to be able to relate to that song. And, uh, you know, we'll do a little something that will uh, push it out as a, a little bonus to this podcast. So, right. um, But I do want to ask you, because you have such great talent, mm -hmm. would you do us the honor of uh, playing a song for us? Sure, would love to. Oh, I've good. Got, got this old... Uh, Martin D35 back here that I bought Ooh. when I was 13. Well, I didn't buy it, but my my parents knew that I was serious. And so they bought me this guitar and it's been with me uh, ever since. It's a beauty so, and like uh, a best friend. It is. It is. Um, so I have a, a song, um, Gabriel Doulis and a third songwriter, Tristan Bushman and I wrote a couple of years ago. And it was a single, I think back in the fall. Okay. It's called On My Way to See You. And uh, it's a road song. So I guess uh, you can take musicians off the road. It's just kind of hard to take the road out of the, <laughs> out of the psyche, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this, this tells the story of this. And you know this. Uh, when you're driving by yourself, especially driving home, there are certain mind tricks that your brain plays. You know, yeah. the, the person that I left behind, are they still there? Are they there with somebody else? How's nah. the town? You know, all the things when you're driving by yourself, especially down long stretches of road, like falling down the face of Virginia or going across Texas or Illinois, or I don't know if you know this, but the stretch between Nashville and Memphis is only a couple hundred miles, but it feels like three and a half days. I don't, 
you may have a few stretches in Wisconsin like that. But, oh, oh, mm-hmm. yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. So there's just something about a long stretch of road and driving by yourself. So this is where uh, On My Way to See You came from. Excellent. Hotel rooms wasted time way too soon when I'm on my way to see on my way to see our left Illinois never ends when I'm on my way to see on my way to see rest stop junkies gas station fools they won't stop me when I'm on my way to see you on my way to see you on my way to see you when i'm on my way to see you on my way to see you on my way to see you see you Stop rewriting the last words we said when I'm on my way to see you, on my way to see you, worried sick where you are, who you're with when I'm on my way to see you, on my way to see you, my mind is racing, got my doubts deep, thoughts I'm chasing, trying to slow me down. I can't turn around on my way to see you, on my way to see you, on my way to see you, well, I'm on my way to see you, on my way to see you, on my way to see you, see you. You're the only reason that I come back. No one else has ever made me do that. When I'm on my way to see you, 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 see you. Oh, Mark! Woo wee! So there was a that was a single out. Oh <coughs> wow! Thank you. There's a cool video out there. I'll point people towards. You can see it on YouTube site at Mark Elliott Creative and wherever else. But uh, okay. I, I have years of old road footage from my band Runaway Home oh. from like a you know a dash cam videos, and we just kept everything. Yeah. And so I went back and. Um, stole some of the coolest road uh, footage from the dashboard cam over the years. And we per- got in an old gym, 50s style gym, uh, a little further out from me and projected the video onto the walls and then shot me singing in front of it. So it's, it's got this cool kind of travel log uh, vibe. So Well, and, and the chorus is one of those, once you hear it, you feel like you could sing along with it. It's very catchy. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good one. People, people seem, uh, you know, sometimes audiences are reluctant to start singing, you know, but that's a song that just a handful of words and you're there. You're right. Yeah. So they tend to pick, pick it up pretty good. What's this good? Oh, I loved it. Thank you so Thanks. much. Oh my gosh. And I have seen the video, so I'm going to encourage everybody oh, okay. to go and yeah. look it up. 
Oh, it is. It's very cool. You're going to want to keep all those videos for the day somebody does an autobiography about you. Those will all come in handy, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> it might. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So how do you feel about uh, 10 questions with Terry? <coughs> okay, These, let's we do just, it. We just tear on through these, but it's a great way to get to know you. So this is fun. So it's a lightning round. You got it. All right. So okay. here we go. Number one. All right. Where are you from originally? Where did you grow up? Well, where I'm from and where I grew up, two different places. I was oh. born in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Oh, wow. Okay. But my parents were uh, college professors, so we bounced university towns uh, almost like uh, a military family does bases. Right. So Oklahoma University, West Virginia, Florida State. But most of my growing up, my adolescence, uh, Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia. How about that? Okay, that's fascinating. I've been around. <laughs> I've been around. Um, when did you first know that you wanted to play music? How old were you when you first kind of started dabbling and then got serious? You know, interestingly enough, I got turned on to my, my parents' record collection, of course, given mm. the era, was perfect. Yes. Uh, and I say record collection, but there was a an old... Uh, VW bus in our family, a 1972 VW camper bus with an eight track in it. Oh. And that's what introduced <laughs> me to music. I call it, uh, I wrote about it in, in a book called The Sons of Star Mount. And I called it the eight track with an engine in back. Oh, that's great. And uh, I, I, you know, it was Jim Croce and it was John Denver mm. and uh, Gordon Lightfoot and Joni Mitchell and Harry Chapin. Um, and then some of the funk bands of the time, like Fifth Dimension, all these oh. great kind of 70s, especially the singer songwriters I connected with as a young kid. So I started listening to lyrics. So honestly, I think I decided I wanted to start playing the guitar so I could write. Oh. Uh, I just I for some reason, I was able to connect with. I didn't know it was a feeling of gravitas then, but I really picked up on what it meant to be a, a writer. Now, I, I will tell you, I wish I would have maybe started as a interested party in learning to be a great guitar player, a great musician, but I only learned how to, to kind of cover myself so that I could write. You know? <laughs> but I, I'd say about, I, I kind, of, kind of late to the game with music. I mean, okay. you ask a lot of people, um, professionals in Nashville when they started and we're talking single digits but I, I don't really think I picked up the guitar seriously until I was about 12. Wow. Um, you know I think Gay Berdoulas was practically having professional gigs by the time he was nine. So. Yeah yeah I'm pretty sure he <laughs> was. <laughs> but so, but I really started it so I could write. Oh I yeah. love it. Now okay so you said the guitar was a gift the guitar you're playing for us today. What age yeah. did you get that? 13 and it was this little oh. guitar shop uh in the middle of dc okay um and we we went and visited and of course you know the the guy saw me as a young kid and showed us a lot of cheap guitars hmm. and you know bless my parents they knew i was serious yes and uh, so my dad knew enough to go where are the real ones <laughs> and there was this back room kind of behind these metal doors and all this and that's where the real ones were and this uh, old martin uh well it was new then it came out of the custom shop Ooh. in the 70s but the guy didn't buy it uh so it sat in this case in this place and it's it's the typical story especially when you're young well it never goes away you grab a guitar that's meant to be yours you cannot put it down oh and that's, that's so great so, I love yeah, that story. What a good yeah. story. Thank you. Well, it's funny because we, you know, it was expensive even back then. We're talking 1980, 81. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so I, we had to put money down on it over time. And I would ride the bus and subway from the Northern Virginia suburbs on weekends Whew, uh, yeah. to have conjugal visits with my guitar. But <laughs> until we could bust it out of there, you know. So. Oh. So, you, so I you have, learned to love the instrument uh, yes. after I learned to write. Oh my gosh. And you have good humor on top of it all. So that's even better. Wow. If you don't have good humor in the, in the creative world, you're in trouble. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Ooh, boy. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite instrument then? Do you have one that you play or do you have one that you enjoy listening to? Well, um, my main instrument is on guitar, but I grew up a around a lot of bluegrass too. 
Uh, a lot of people don't know that Washington D.C. was a huge bluegrass town. Oh, love bluegrass. Uh, had a, a has a a, a, a a club there called uh, the Birchmere, and the house band was called the Seldom Seen. That became a very famous kind of national band. But they were the house band on Thursday night. So as a teenager, I was there every Thursday night, just soaking that up. And they had great harmonies, and they sung a lot of contemporary songs. So it was easy for a young person to connect yeah. with, you know. Nice. So I love the banjo. Oh, I love banjo. The banjo! I think because of that, you know. So it, that yeah. sound, there's just something to it. It makes you feel oh. something. Woo! Yeah, it does. Okay, how about if you were not a musician? Sorry, what would you do instead? Well, you know, of course, any real musician will tell you that's not who the, you know, the music is who they are, but they have done yes. a thousand things, you know. Mm -hmm. And I certainly have, I have a degree in social work. I come from a whole family of social workers. It's a family curse. So I have actually worked um, <laughs> part time or on and off for 20 years with uh, adolescent psychiatric patients. Oh, so kids wow. that are uh, at Vanderbilt. Um, and it's really, I, I tell people it's been my waiter job. Uh, and I've had this on again, off again uh, relationship with that job where I can call, I can say, well, I can work a few days this month or I can't work or, hey, by the way, can I work every day for a little while? And I've had that on and off for years. So I'm lucky to have that degree but I've done, you know, I've done landscaping and God knows what else, tons of things. Yeah. But you absolutely. know what I would, uh, you know what I would have done though, on a, hmm. on a passion standpoint, not that working with kids isn't passion because I absolutely love working oh. with kids that are hurting because yeah. it's quite the privilege to intersect with a kid's life when they need you the most, you know, but honestly, the only, the only other passion thing I would love to do would be flying. I love flying. Oh. I wanted to be a pilot <laughs> growing up. I was the kid you know, with his head in the sky and his mm -hmm. hand out the car window, you know, like a wing. <laughs> and I, I did get my pilot's license about 20 years ago. Oh. So I can fly little single engine uh, planes. That and is I cool. And I love it. I love that. So I, I could have seen cool. myself as a, uh, as a pilot and occasionally, occasionally dream of doing that. Ah, oh, see what we're learning about you. This is so much fun. <laughs> Um, of course, you write original songs. They're all yours. But if you would ever do a cover or if you ever are asked to do a cover, do you have a favorite? Gosh, so, so many, of uh -oh. course. And I, I, But I'll have to tell you that I think John Denver's music impacted me more than anything. Mm. Uh, there was something about that great tenor voice that just soared over the top. And he sung about things that mattered to me I've always been an outdoor kid I've always loved mountains and rivers yeah. and wide open spaces and when I would listen to that music it connected with me viscerally so you know songs like country roads and rhymes and reasons mm -hmm. um those are still touchstones for me um they're classics and I, yeah and I think there's such a thing I've been pitching this idea most people think I'm nuts but I'll pitch it here with you I <laughs> I think that there's such a thing as a DNA song I figure if someone's experience winds up that they can pass something along genetically. If you have enough of an impactful experience in your life, mm -hmm. emotional included, I want, I, I believe that that gets passed along. And I'll tell you that I run across huh. <coughs> young people now that know that song. Oh, they yes. don't know anything of John Denver. They don't mm -hmm. even know that name. Um, but they know that song and they can sing along. And when you ask them, how they learned, they're long past their moms and dads having that. Their moms and dads didn't listen to John Denver. Yep. You know, there is something they just about know a it. renaissance, isn't there? The renaissance of music that uh, the good stuff just always gets, comes back. It just gets passed along. So I feel yeah. like there's some DNA songs. And I'll tell you the other DNA song I think is um, Harry Chapin's Cats in the Cradle. Ooh, wow. Kids know, kids know that, you know, <sighs> and they don't, they have no clue why. Mm-hmm. You know? That's so, a tough one to listen to, too. Man. It is. It is. Ooh, you just gave me goosebumps. Ooh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, how about, let, let's move on to a couple of different sort of things, but um, how about a favorite food? What's your favorite food? And now knowing you've lived so many places, this should be a great yeah. answer. Well, I'm going to go pretty basic because in the end, 
a great steak cooked medium rare. Oh yeah. With nothing with nothing else on it. Don't put any A1 sauce. Somebody put a <laughs> Facebook thing out and said, "Were well, you an A1 guy or or a Worcester?" I'm like, "None of it. Just cooking it." So I love a good steak. Okay. Perfect. How about your favorite mode of I know this answer now. Favorite mode of transportation. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I do love Ooh. to fly. You know, ironically, my two favorite <laughs> modes are probably 180 degrees from one another. Oh. I love to fly and I love to hike, right? So uh, kind of feet in the wing, I suppose. Yeah, huh, okay. Um, do you have any pets or do you have a particular affinity toward any pets or any kinds well, of animals? I, I love animals and I've had pets all my life. And yeah. I, my, I've had, uh, three dogs here at the Cub Creek property. And again, I've been out here 20 years. I had Montana, uh, Grizzly, and um, Cub. So you can imagine uh, what they look like. They were yeah. these kind of half chow, half lab, brown bear looking dogs. And, and they they had a, a long life, but I lost them all over the last maybe 10 years. So I haven't had dogs in a while, but I borrow dogs. Um, ah. Uh, being Uncle Mark to my friends' kids is great yes. because I can I can always be the hero and be the fun guy. And when they start <laughs> going bad, I just take them home. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same way, same way with dogs. So my mom's got a she lives down here. She's got a little dog named Dorothy. So Dorothy will come home with me some and spend the night. And then Gabe uh, just got a dog, a pit bull that he rescued from the highway. That is the oh. sweetest dog ever, named How about Bubba. That? Oh, Bub Bubba the dog. And so uh, Gabe is playing a lot in Nashville uh, and he'll he'll have two or three gigs uh, sometimes on the weekends. And so I'll go, hey, that's a long time for Bubba to be in the house. I Absolutely. Bubba should come. Bubba should come spend the night with me for a couple of nights. So I, I just had Bubba for a few days. Oh, Uncle Mark, you're the best. Yeah. That is the way yeah, to do works. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. OK, <clears throat> so right now, as we're talking, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, so I mean, I've, I'm a project guy. Okay. Uh, as long as I have projects in the works, I'm happy. I don't do well with nothing to do. As much as I love hiking and sitting by a river and and all the etherealness of wilderness, oh gosh, I have to be busy. <laughs> so I have a lot of projects. Okay. Um, we have about five more songs in the pipeline. Uh, Going to release another single late in August. Um, I've got a brand new um, literary newsletter out called Words from the Hollow, and it's on this cool um, platform called Substack. Ah. So people can find me at markelliot.substack. Okay. They can subscribe and get a piece of uh, writing from me uh, for free every week in their inbox. So I'm writing a lot for that. I'm finishing, I'm in the last chapter or two of a... Uh, 20 year memoir of working with uh, kids in mm. psychiatric care. Wow. Um, so that's a pretty big book project that's been going on about 18 months. And I'm hoping to have that done soon because I am tired of talking about those subjects. Not tired of it, but it's, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a daunting subject matter when kids are hurting, you know? Oh man. Um, well, thank you for that. Wow. So, got that going on and I'm excited about, playing again i started playing in nashville again in the last few months there are a few listening rooms that have opened back up and uh, a few little kind of bars i've been playing in Great. runaway home is finally getting back on the road in august uh we're oh, going up to upstate, upstate new york yeah. which is one of our favorite places to go because we play from the adirondacks up to uh really the st Lawrence seaway so mm. you get the mountains and you get that great farmland so we cannot wait to get back out there. Oh, so that'll be in August. That sounds amazing. Thank It'd you for sharing your story Thanks and all the pieces of you now that we know. But <clears throat> now I need to ask you again if you would play another song. How do you feel about oh, that? Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I love I don't Ooh. even have to really twist your arm. So that's a good thing. Right. No, you don't. You shouldn't <laughs> have to, twi to twist any, uh, any musician's arm. Oh. <laughs> So I'll tell you that I, um, I think one of the great blessings in my life as a songwriter, um, 
is that I've been involved with a group called Music Therapy of the Rockies mm. for uh, many uh, several years. And uh, a few times a year, we meet out at Amy Grant and Vince Gill's farm. They have a great wow. barn out there that's a function barn. Yeah. And they bring in veterans uh, with PTSD, mainly through the VA, but also through some other organizations that are really hurting. Yeah. And you may not know that, I mean, the suicide rate among uh, veterans in particular is incredibly high. Yes. Uh, so it's a really needed program. It's a weekend and it's really fascinating. They, um, it's usually uh, <clears throat> somewhere between six and 10 veterans and they have music therapists and they have music therapy students from Belmont, a local college, and they do music therapy. They give them guitars. And this is fascinating. Uh, it took me a minute to figure out, but because a lot of them don't play. Right, music. right. But when they put a guitar in their hand, Terry, they know how it feels because it feels like a rifle. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> it sits in the lap like a rifle. So it, there is a comfort to it. And with the suicide rate, what it is, we, uh, we want folks with guitars in their hands. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're getting some basic uh, guitar lessons and also just kind of ways of using music to pull yourself out of the darkest moments. Mm. So that's part of the camp. And then the other part is they bring songwriters like myself out there and they pair us with a vet and we help them write their story. Huh. Uh, and we write it with them. That's what makes this camp different. It's not yeah. like you're writing a story about them. You are writing with them. So I'm constantly saying things like, what word would you say? What's honest? Does this feel like it's real? You know, <clears throat> and it is an incredibly transformational weekend. Um, hmm. The difference between seeing these men and women on day one and the last day. And on the last day is a big concert where you play with them, mostly the songs that you wrote. Oh, that's got to be incredible. So it's, this, it's really incredible. Oh. <clears throat> so um it's really a great program and we have vets who are in their early 20s and and still in but just struggling to yeah. vietnam uh, era veterans mm -hmm. uh and so i got a front row seat at how the negativity in our own heads the things that we say to ourselves mm -hmm. uh are are about as devastating and probably more devastating than what other people could say. Yeah. I've always and, uh, heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's yep. true. And I got a front row seat to that. So this song uh, I wrote as an anecdote to that. Um, and I wrote it with a very good friend of mine named Melody Guy, who is a wonderful singer songwriter. You would dig talking to her. Uh, it's and it is the current single until Friday hits. Ah, so, oh, this is great. So it's been out <clears throat> since January. <clears throat> um, and it's called Talk to Yourself Like a Good Mama Would. So, uh, I've been rifling and talking my head off to you, so I may be a little hoarse. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> you can do with this day nobody could have done it better close your eyes and put it away it ain't the best or the worst one ever I know you think that you're standing still whole world is passing you by. You can't see it right now, but you will. It'll all work out if you try. Oh, to talk to yourself like a good mama would. Talk to yourself as a friend. Be kind no one else will and happiness will find your heart again your heart again mm. 
Though you say you feel so alone And nothing's been working so far Little victories, they come and they go I know I've been right where you are Talk to yourself like a good mama would Talk to yourself as a friend. Be kind, be forgiven, but no one else will. And happiness will find your heart again. Oh, happiness will find your heart again, again and again. Talk to yourself. Oh, like a good mama would. Mm-hmm. Oh, the songs you chose to play today just they just hit. They hit oh, the you. the timing, the the words, the emotion. It's uh, wow. Everybody can relate to those songs, Mark. Thank, thank you. you. Wow, incredible. Really, really well done. Thank you. Of course, no. I, I uh, you know, I've been writing songs for a very long time. I've written mm-hmm. for a lot of publishers, written a lot of commercial music. But at this point in my life, I am legacy shop. I mean. I, um, I'm an only child. I'm a divorced guy. I don't have any kids. So I look behind me and go, Whoa, I'm the caboose of this whole (laughs) Elliot line, you know? And uh, I start thinking about what I want to leave behind and what I want people to uh, remember about me. And so that informs a lot of my songs. Not that I always write serious songs. In fact, Gabe and I just wrote last night, by the way, he and I have a midnight writing uh, date every Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, however you look at it, for the last five five years. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and uh, we have oh. written last night's was not number ninety four, so we got a big celebration when we hit a hundred songs. Woo. But anyway, we wrote a song last night called Christmas in July, which is really funny. So I don't write all serious songs, but I'm yeah. very aware of uh, what I want to say and what I want to be remembered for. But you also know what hits people and what. Um, I'm going to say in a lot of ways, we also need to hear. So thank you for that. Wow. Thank you. Well, I think as a, any type of writer or creative, and you know this uh, too, uh, as being an excellent host, uh, one of your best skills is to listen. If you don't listen, forget about trying to talk. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> no. Well, I have enjoyed so much listening to you play and to share your Thanks. stories. One more time, give us, um, how about the website? It seems like that might be right. one of the main places yeah. for people to go to find you and then figure out where you are from there. Yeah, that's a good idea. So Mark Elliott Creative, and Elliott has two L's and two T's in it. Yep. And Mark Elliott Creative has uh, all of my music, the books that are out. And uh, I have a podcast called Conversations on Cub Creek, uh, where I talk to interesting people so that you can find out all about that stuff from Mark Elliott Green. I love it. Mark, we can't wait to get you to Madison. And a friend of Gabe's is a friend of ours. So you are welcome uh, I, anytime. I, I love that guy. He's, he's a great person and very talented. So uh, we love um, him too. You, did, you, you did well growing him up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, give them big hugs. Give yourself some big hugs from us. And I hope we really get to see you soon, but um, can't not wait for your new song coming out on Friday. Thanks for that, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> a joy to talk to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And again, everybody, Mark Elliott out of Nashville, taking time to hang with us today. Thanks again, Mark. Bye. Thank you.